Hey everyone, I'm back with some new stuff to show you. Uh, first thing I want to do is show you a new clutch that hatched. We don't have a whole lot of clutches hatching right now, but got a few of them and there's Spike. I don't know if you could hear that or not, but my umbrella cockatoo Spike is making his presence known um, and he's in another room, so he's pretty loud. Um, anyway, I've got one clutch here that hatched uh, last week, just shed that I want to show you. And then I'm going to show you some GHI stuff, uh, specifically GHI plus a recessive gene. GHI is a codominant gene. Uh, it stands for gotta have it. So um, uh, I, I bred that into several different recessive projects. Most of these I think I've shown at some point before, but I figured I'd take another look at them and, uh, and show you some updates on them. So let's get into this clutch. Um, okay, so it was from a leopard lesser clown bred to a killer clown. So it's killer clown, which means it's super pastel, uh, which means everything is gonna have pastel in it. And then uh, there could also be leopard and lesser in it as well. Let's just take a look and see what happened. Okay, here's the clutch as a whole. They are not practicing social distancing as most of the rest of the world is right now, at least most of the rest of the United States. But I'm pretty sure that they're corona free. Okay, so let's just see what we got here. Lots of leopard stuff in here. Here's a really nice pastel lesser clown. And this one, I'm not sure. I don't think this one has leopard in it. It looks like it has something in it. But when you see the other leopard pastel lesser clowns that I have here, they look very different from this one. This one's got a real wide, thick stripe going through it. Wouldn't surprise me if there's a leopard in that. And also it's got a reduced head pattern. I'm just not 100% sure. Here's a more typical leopard lesser clown, pastel clown. And here's another one. So these guys are also very different from each other, just the same way that these two are very different. I'm a little confused as to what's going on with these, but I don't know. Maybe this one does have leopard in it and this is the only one that doesn't. And there's a pastel leopard clown. Another pastel leopard clown. And another pastel leopard clown. I love breeding visual recessive to visual recessive because then you know everything. Like in this case, everything is a clown. It's a very cool clutch and just increased my clown population here by a bit. I don't think I'm going to keep any of these, though I've already got quite a few pastel lesser clown breeders, um, lots of pastel clown breeders. Uh, I've got leopard pretty heavily into my clown collection now as well. Isn't that a pretty group of snakes? Let's look at that. Of course, they're all, they all have their heads pointed away from you. Not very convenient to look at them close up. Probably interested in tagging me. So these guys will get set up and get their first meals this week. So I will have more babies hatching soon. I think I'm up to 15 clutches for the year now, 15 or 16. And uh, I'm getting new clutches almost every day now. So I think it'll start coming along pretty quickly at this point. I probably have between 40 and 50 gravid females right now. So some really exciting stuff. It's gonna be hard to figure out what to hold back and what to let go this year, because I've got so many things, like a lot of double recessive projects and things that I'm, I, I'm gonna really struggle with letting stuff go. You know, like, I don't know, my first instinct with everything that hatches out that's really cool is to keep it, of course. Um, that's how I grow, you know, how, that's how I grew a nice big collection of really cool uh, snakes here, but 
um, you know, you just can't keep everything. So it's going to be some hard decisions this year for sure. Okay, now let's start looking at some GHI stuff. So most of you are probably pretty familiar with GHI. This is a standard, just a normal GHI, uh, small adult female. Actually trying to breed her to, uh, uh, boy, what am I trying to breed? I think I'm breeding her to a Coral Glow Mystic Potion right now. So that would be some pretty cool stuff that came out of there. But uh, the, so the GHI is basically, it's a, it's a dark gene. Um, there is a super version that uh, is much, much darker than the regular version. There isn't as much light pattern, and the light pattern that it does have is a lot darker than what this one has. Okay, so that's the original one. Okay, now here's what that does when you mix genetic stripe in with it kind of like a it looks similar to a cinnamon genetic stripe but it just has a, it's a little darker than most cinnamon genetic stripes stripes i'd say really cool almost patternless look to it you know you can see a little bit of striping along the back here and of course the, the light stripe in the middle of the g stripe is lighter all the way through but you really only see the black outlining of the stripe towards the back part kind of like a lot of the cinnamon genetic stripes too um yeah very very similar okay so the next one i have here this is a pied ghi I really like these a lot. I'm actually doing quite a bit with this right now, trying to get this into other genes. I'm trying to um, breed black pastel into this, um, uh, NG, um, you know, coral glow, a lot of different things in with this. Um, they're actually sometimes a little hard to identify when they first hatch, but as they get bigger, um, you know, they just have this smoothness of the pattern that a normal pie doesn't have. You know, like, it's almost like, like the striping along here was wet and you just took it and smudged it out. And then it's got, you know, this one anyway, has a lot of light uh, colors in there too. This is a young adult female and I'm currently breeding this one to a mahogany pied. I don't know if she's gonna go or not. She's right, right around 1500 grams, really active too. Um, she should produce this year, but it might be later in the year. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens when you mix another dark gene in with us, and the mahogany will be perfect for that, I think. I'm also working on Super GHI Pides, so hopefully I'll get some of those this year too. I've been producing GHI Pides for probably about three, three or four years now, so definitely one of my favorite darker Pied combos. Okay, I'm going to get him... Her, I should say, put away back in her tub. Okay, let's check out some light stuff. Here is a typical albino GHI. Pretty busy pattern compared to a regular albino. Um, even as it gets bigger, it, they typically hold their, well, some of them hold their whites pretty well. Most of them, the white will, or the yellow will eventually bleed into the white a bit making it a kind of yellow on yellow snake but the the color is still there at, for adults this is a, a juvenile um obviously but um you know i'm hoping to add some other things to this to to um bring out the bright yellows and keep the bright whites and i'm gonna i'm actually working on uh getting black pastel into this uh so albino black pastel ghi and i'm also trying to do the um toffino GHIs as well. Haven't produced one of those yet, but shouldn't be too long from now. And speaking of lavender colored snakes, here is a lavender GHI. You can see the difference in color. Now the lavender isn't real dark on this one, but you can definitely see it, especially with a regular albino next to it. The, you know, this one's got nice lavenders. This one's got the white of the, the typical albino. I'm gonna put this one away. 
and then we'll try to get her to come out here. She's got a lot of really nice subtle colors. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up that well, but lots of really nice different tones of yellow in there, maybe even a little bit of orange. And then she's got those nice dark ruby red eyes that lavender albinos typically have. I don't know if we're going to be able to get her to stretch out or not. I think that's about as good as we're going to get with her. So I think there's some pretty cool potential with this. Uh, you know, maybe put Enchi into this. Leopard, of course, would be a good way to go. Black Pastel would be very good too. So many different combos that mix into Lavender really well. I'm really trying to focus on producing a lot of different uh, you know, multi codom lavender combos now. I just want to bring out those nice dark colors, nice dark yellows, and then get that lavender nice and dark in there, but have a very high contrast between the lavender and the yellows. Okay, now I'll show you a couple clowns. This is my adult breeder male GHI clown. You can see he's a lot darker than a typical clown. I don't have one handy here. I can show you the difference, but he's a lot darker than a typical clown. So I think he's a, this is a really key uh, gene to add into clown. I think there's a ton of potential, especially as you start adding other pattern morphs to it, which I'm gonna show you one and a couple of them here in just a minute. So this guy, I produced him in, I think it was 2014 and he's produced quite a few babies for me. I also have a pastel GHI clown breeder male that's this one's son and he's a great breeder for me as well. He's actually a better breeder than this one. This guy he'll breed females every once in a while. The, the pastel he'll just breed any female you put him with anytime. Okay so that is a pretty typical adult male GHI clown. Here is one of my favorite GHI clown combos. This is a GHI Mojave clown. When these hatch, they're quite a bit darker than this. They do lighten up and kind of fade a little bit as they grow. But I think once we figure out some other genes to add into this, uh, you know, my goal is to keep the busy pattern, but get the pattern to be as dark as possible. Um, you know, leopard spot nose, uh, you know, possibly Enchi to sharpen the pattern up a little bit. Um, you know, there's, there's so many different ways to go with this. Maybe mahogany, a um, lot of different things you can mix in with this. But this is one of my favorite, it's one of my favorite clown combos actually, and it's also definitely one of my favorite GHI clown combos. I should be producing a number of these this year. Some of them with pastel, uh, possibly some other genes as well. Um, I should produce lesser GHI clowns, a pastel lesser GHI clowns. Um, uh, I might even produce banana GHI Mojave clowns. Um, got a lot of different possibilities with it now. Okay, I'm gonna put her back. One more to show you here. This one is one of my favorite holdbacks from 2019. This is a pastel GHI spot nose clown. And he's getting not too far from being ready to breed. He'll definitely go this fall. I'm I don't, probably not gonna push him and use him this summer, but by fall he'll be ready to go and I'll have all kinds of clown girls and heck clown girls ready for him. The spot nose just whacks out the pattern so much. You know, I really think that spot nose is, is a pretty critical um, morph to have in with clown as well. And, uh, you know, they're extremely popular. A lot of, a lot of people are working on spot nose clown combos. Um, I just, I was super happy with how the GHI interacted with the spot nose. I don't know if I'm going to produce any more of these this year. Maybe, maybe one clutch but I'm not sure, I don't remember offhand. It's a problem when you produce 
you know, 300 to 400 clutches a year, sometimes more as it's hard to remember exactly what you're doing with every clutch, but I'll have a lot of different clown combos available and I can tell you that for sure. All right, well, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, that's it for today. I didn't bring any more snakes here, I don't think, to show you. So um, I'll, I will have more stuff hatching soon. I'll probably show some more, uh, do a couple more videos showing some bigger holdback stuff from last year, some of my favorites. But um, I'll definitely be coming back with a lot of new hatchlings this year. Uh, lots of cool stuff. I've even got some really nice clutches incubating right now. Um, but the best clutches are still yet to come. So stay tuned. I'll be back soon. If you uh, want to see what I actually have available for sale, make sure to check out my website, royalconstrictordesigns.com. Also make sure to like my business Facebook page. Um, I post a lot of stuff on there before I do videos on them. And then also I want to let you know that I did a, a, a video, or a uh, video, sorry, a pot, I'm doing a video right now. I'm, I did a podcast with Chris Eaton and Snakes and the Fat Man, uh, which was just, uh, it just came out a couple of days ago. So I actually think it might have even been yesterday, depending on when you uh, watch this. But anyway, make sure to check that out. Uh, again, it's Snakes and the Fat Man. Hope you like it. Uh, I'll talk to you soon.